45 miles southwest of Las Vegas, three towers rise 459 feet above the Mojave Desert floor, each one standing taller than the Statue of Liberty. Surrounding them, 173,500 heliostats hold 347,000 individual mirrors, all computer-controlled to track the sun and focus its energy onto boilers at the top of those towers. The Avanpa Solar Electric Generating System cost $2.2 billion to build, and what happened after it opened tells a story nobody quite expected. Most people picture solar panels when they think about solar power, those photovoltaic surfaces that convert sunlight directly into electricity through semiconductor materials. Avampa operates on an entirely different principle called concentrated solar power, which generates extreme heat to produce steam. Each of those 173,500 heliostats contains two reflective surfaces that track the sun using GPS and fiber optic networks. Throughout the day, these mirrors continuously adjust their angles, directing concentrated sunlight toward the power towers at the facility's center. Atop each tower sits a water-filled boiler weighing 2,200 tons, and when sunlight from thousands of mirrors converges on these boilers, temperatures reach an extraordinary 1,022 degrees Fahrenheit. That superheated steam, pressurized at 160 bar, drives Siemens turbines connected to generators. The process mirrors how coal and natural gas plants generate electricity. But here's the difference. Sunlight provides the heat instead of burning fossil fuels. Air-cooled dry cooling technology reduces water consumption by 90% compared to conventional solar thermal plants, which made it possible to build such a massive facility in one of North America's driest regions. September 22, 2010 marked the California Energy Commission's construction approval, with the Bureau of Land Management following in October. Weeks later, on October 27, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and Interior Secretary Ken Salazar attended the groundbreaking ceremony. Bechtel took on the construction challenge, and at peak activity, their crews installed more than 800 heliostats per day. 7.3 million worker hours went into the project without a single lost time incident. But the desert held surprises nobody anticipated. Spring 2011 brought construction to an abrupt halt. Pre-construction surveys had estimated a maximum of 32 desert tortoises on the 3,500-acre site, and that number proved wildly wrong. Workers discovered 162 adults and 608 juveniles, with a Fish and Wildlife Service biological opinion citing up to 1,136 tortoises potentially affected by the project. $56 million went into tortoise protection and relocation efforts, and BrightSource executives warned at one point that this cost truly could kill the project. Crews relocated 173 tortoises outside the construction zone and placed 110 juveniles in protective holding pens. Problems kept multiplying despite these efforts, with vehicles crushing animals, army ants attacking hatchlings, and ravens and coyotes preying on relocated tortoises. By December 2013, 23 tortoises had disappeared from monitoring programs entirely. USGS research ecologist Jeff Lovich put it plainly, for the desert tortoise, this situation represented death by a thousand cuts. California officially declared the Mojave Desert Tortoise endangered in 2024. Construction resumed in June 2011. Unit 1 received its first concentrated solar heat in February 2013. Unit 2 followed in May, and Unit 3 reached the same milestone in June. Grid connection happened in September 2013, and all three units achieved full operation by December. February 13, 2014 brought the formal dedication ceremony, designed to showcase American renewable energy innovation. Energy Secretary Ernest Moniz praised the 170,000 shining heliostat mirrors and the three towers that would dwarf the Statue of Liberty. The rock band The Fray attended and filmed a music video on site for their album Helios, named after the Greek god of the sun. 392 megawatts of gross generating capacity made Avampa the world's largest concentrated solar thermal plant. Official materials from BrightSource, NRG Energy, Bechtel, and the Department of Energy all stated the facility could power 140,000 homes, a figure based on California-specific household consumption data at peak capacity. A separate DOE calculation using national averages came out to 94,400 homes, 
reflecting California's lower than average household energy use. The financial backing matched the ambition. $1.6 billion came from a Department of Energy loan guarantee issued April 11, 2011. NRG Energy put in $300 million for 50% ownership. Google contributed $168 million for 36%, and Brightsource held the remaining 14% with $130 million in equity. Additional funding included a Treasury Section 1603 grant of $539 million and $90 million through the EB-5 Investor Immigration Program, bringing the total project cost to $2.2 billion. Troubling signs emerged before the dedication ceremony took place. During Fish and Wildlife Service monitoring visits in October 2013, researchers witnessed something disturbing. Birds flying into the concentrated solar flux above the mirrors were igniting mid-air, and workers coined a grim name for these incidents, streamers. Air temperatures in the focal zones where sunlight converges reached 900 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to instantly combust feathers and flesh. During those October visits, researchers documented streamers occurring at a rate of approximately one every two minutes. A Fish and Wildlife Service report called Ivan Paw a potential mega trap for wildlife. Estimates of annual bird deaths range widely depending on methodology. Brightsource put the number at approximately 1,000 per year, while their own monitoring data from 2015, adjusted for carcass counting inefficiencies, suggested 3,500. Federal biologists released a September 2016 estimate of 6,000 birds annually and the Center for Biological Diversity claimed the number could reach 28,000, though industry representatives disputed that figure. Peregrine falcons, barn owls, morning doves, hummingbirds, and greater roadrunners numbered among the species killed. Gary George of Audubon, California, called a vampa a bird sink and a cautionary tale unfolding on public lands, adding that the facility continues to operate as though there's an endless supply of birds to burn. Mitigation efforts have included replacing floodlights with LEDs, adjusting mirror focus during standby periods, installing avian radar systems, and adding perch guards. But progress has been described as modest. For a facility marketed as solar power, Ivanpah burns a surprising amount of natural gas. Desert temperatures drop dramatically overnight, cooling the water throughout the system. Each morning, gas-fired heating brings the boilers back to operating temperature before solar collection can begin. Original permits allowed 328 million cubic feet of natural gas per year. August 2014 brought a 60% increase to 525 million cubic feet. Approved by California just months after the dedication ceremony, 46,084 metric tons of carbon dioxide. That's what the plant emitted in 2014 from burning natural gas alone. This figure nearly doubled the 25,000-ton threshold that would typically require participation in California's cap-and-trade program. Critics argue this gas usage undermines Ivan Pa's renewable classification, since California rules require natural gas to contribute less than 5% of output for a facility to qualify as renewable. 940,000 megawatt-hours annually was the design target. Reality delivered something different. The first full year of operation in 2014 produced approximately 419,000 megawatt-hours, just 44.6% of the target. Output improved to 653,122 megawatt-hours by 2015, reaching about 70% of the design goal. Clouds, jet contrails, and weather took the blame from the California Energy Commission. Since the technology requires direct sunlight and even thin clouds disrupt performance, contractual delivery requirements were finally met by 2017, though the 940,000 megawatt hour target remained out of reach. The best year came in 2020, hitting 856,000 megawatt hours, roughly 91% of the original goal. Average annual production from 2015 through 2023 settled at approximately 700, 2,322 megawatt-hours, about 75% of design capacity, $200 per megawatt-hour, or 20 cents per kilowatt-hour. That's what Ivanpah's power purchase agreements locked in with California utilities. The price seemed reasonable for cutting-edge solar technology at the time, but a technology race was underway, 
and concentrated solar power lost badly. When Ivampa's design phase began in 2009, concentrated solar and photovoltaic competed as potential winners for utility-scale solar generation. During construction, photovoltaic manufacturing scaled globally and costs dropped by 70-80% to 80 over the following decade. Today's utility-scale photovoltaic installations deliver power at approximately $30 to $35 per megawatt hour, roughly one-sixth of Ivanpa's electricity cost. The reasons come down to engineering complexity. Concentrated solar power requires precision optical alignment, high-temperature materials, and complex plumbing systems. Photovoltaic technology needed only cheaper silicon and glass, and global manufacturing delivered exactly that. Jenny Chase of Bloomberg NEF summed it up. These kinds of plants are just technically really difficult to operate. January 2025 brought an announcement from NRG Energy. Plans to terminate power purchase agreements and close Avanpa by early 2026. Pacific Gas and Electric, which purchases output from Units 1 and 3. And Southern California Edison, which buys from Unit 2. Both agreed that terminating the contracts would save customers money compared to maintaining them through their scheduled 2039 expiration. December 4, 2024 changed that plan when the California Public Utilities Commission rejected the termination request. Concerns about meeting California's renewables portfolio standard mandates, stranding over $333 million in ratepayer-funded transmission infrastructure, and uncertainty about federal renewable energy policy all factored into the decision. The Department of Energy announced they would absolutely be appealing the decision. The $1.6 billion federal loan hasn't been fully repaid, though NRG declined to disclose the remaining balance. Former DOE Loan Programs Office Director Jigar Shah offered perspective on Ivampa's legacy. It was clearly successful in that the government gave them money and they commercialized the technology in the United States but it didn't catalyze a trillion dollars worth of investment. So from that perspective, it wasn't successful. The solar photovoltaic investments the DOE made, Shaw observed, did catalyze a trillion dollars of investment. Drive Interstate 15 between Los Angeles and Las Vegas today, and you'll see Ivan Pai's three towers appearing as brightly lit glowing units rising from the desert floor. Airline passengers spot the installation from above regularly. The focal points where sunlight concentrates create such intense brightness that highway viewers see what appear to be three artificial suns floating above the desert. Power Magazine awarded a Vampa Plant of the Year in 2014. The facility inspired the Helios One solar plant in the video game Fallout New Vegas and appeared in Michael Moore's 2019 documentary Planet of the Humans. No new concentrated solar thermal plants have been built in the United States since Ivampa opened. Spain hosts 50 concentrated solar facilities, but hasn't constructed a new one in over a decade. Global concentrated solar capacity totals approximately 7 to 8 gigawatts. Photovoltaic installations now exceed 2,200 gigawatts worldwide. Julia Dowell of the Sierra Club characterized Ivampa as a financial boondoggle and environmental disaster, noting that beyond killing thousands of birds and tortoises, Construction destroyed irreplaceable pristine desert habitat, along with numerous rare plant species. 173,500 heliostats still track the sun across the Mojave Desert today, and those three towers still generate steam and electricity for 140,000 homes. $2.2 billion bought a monument to the unpredictable nature of technological change. A technology that seemed promising in 2009 had already lost the race by the time construction finished in 2013. Birds continue flying into the solar flux. Desert tortoises that survived relocation continue recovering in an ecosystem permanently altered by construction. Natural gas burns each morning to bring the boilers up to temperature. California regulators decided in December 2024 that despite everything, the facility must keep operating rather than closing early because infrastructure investments have already been made and renewable energy targets still need to be met. Ivampa stands as neither the triumph its supporters hoped for, nor the simple failure its critics describe. What it actually represents is a massive, expensive experiment that taught the solar industry lessons it couldn't have learned any other way. The cost included $2.2 billion, thousands of birds, hundreds of tortoises, 
and 3,500 acres of desert that will never quite be the same. If you found this video interesting, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment with your thoughts on whether projects like Ivan Pa were worth the risk, or whether that money should have gone to different solar technologies from the start.